Hello there, I'm Alex from the Skills Team. This video is an extract from my introduction to referencing and Cite Them Right workshop, delivered live to an audience of students on the 20th of October 2020. In this extract, I outline in-text citations and what information is needed when you quote, paraphrase or summarise a source. So, referencing is broken down into two parts and it's often called citing and referencing. Well, it's broken up into two parts. So first of all, an in-text citation and then an entry to a reference list. So for whenever you've got a source that you want to include in your work, you need to do both of these things. You need to use an in-text citation, which is uh, here, uh, which is Reese 2017, for example. And then you need to, and that is where you've actually used it within your work. And then you need to add a reference, an entry to your reference list. And that will include longer information that enables the reader to actually find it. And that will include all the things such as um, what the name of the article is, who published it and where it was published and so on. So I will not, what I'll do now is I'll start covering each of those. So first of all, this in-text citation. At Harvard and APA, uh, generally speaking, if any time you use a source, you need to or use an idea that you need to actually put a citation on it. So when you use a citation, you need to put first of all the author's name then secondly you need to put the edit the year of publication and thirdly the page numbers where needed and i will discuss later where you where and where you will not actually need to put page numbers um so here's an example so pairs and shields 2019 page seven so that's an example of an text citation here's two more so there is a number of different ways that you can actually do in text citations so in the first example uh, we've got the names of the authors outside of the bracket and embedded in the text. So if you can embed the, if you can actually embed the author's names in the text, then do that. But sometimes that doesn't always work in the context of your sentence. So instead, what I'd recommend is putting them in brackets after the point, so after where their idea is. So in the second example, you've got Macmillan and Wears in brackets. And that has the page number, and so does the first one. The, thir the third example, however, does not have a page number. And so you don't always have to use page numbers, but sometimes you do. So hopefully, this next slide will help answer that. So there are three different things you can do. You can quote, you can paraphrase, and you can summarise. So quoting is essentially where you get the author's words and you essentially copy and paste them into your work. You don't have to always use... Um, you don't have to use all of their words. You can sometimes use something called ellipses, which are basically just three full stops so you sh to miss words out. But essentially, it's where you've taken their words and put them into your essay. So whenever you quote, because you quoted our page, you need to use a page number. So if I just go back to the last slide, um, the first and second ones, they're both quotes because they're in quotation marks, and they both had page numbers. The second thing is paraphrasing. So paraphrasing is slightly different from quoting, but what you do is essentially use the author's idea. So if the idea has come from a page, then that is what par that's paraphrasing. So that so you if it comes from a page or pages, that's where you paraphrase, and so you will need those pages. However, if it hasn't come from a page, so it's come from the entire article, then that's summarising. So Paraphrasing essentially is turning some turning the author's words into your own, and then that can actually help make the word make the words flow within your article or not your article your assignment. So I generally speaking paraphrase, although sometimes when you want to quote specific words, I will quote, but it depends on your subject which one's more preferred. In my area, quoting was on the whole more preferred because I was doing law and we had to quote specific words from judges. Uh, although whenever I read a journal, I would often paraphrase that journal to save words and to help make it flow better. Um, the third thing you can do is summarising. So summarising does not need a page number. That, in essence, is where you get the whole of something and you summarise it into what the point of it is. So just going back to the last one, the last slide, it says here, Pair and Shields 2019 give a, gives give a comprehensive overview of how to cite and reference using the eight most popular referencing styles. So that is a summarization of the whole thing. So you can summarize a chapter and then that wouldn't need a page number, or you could summarize um, 
or you could summarize the whole thing. If it's only a few pages, though, I'd probably use the power, use the page number. Um, but if it is, and by a few pages, I mean like two or three pages that the ideas come from, I'd probably say that's more paraphrasing. Um, so that's what. So I'd recommend using a using a page number only when quoting or paraphrasing. And that's when you need to, because they've come from a specific page in a specific book. That's all the content for this referencing video. If you are interested in other referencing videos, we've created a playlist that is on screen now.